Let's see, am I on? Oh, there I am. Sometimes I mute this thing and I turn it on and off and I don't know which way I've gone with it and <laughs> don't know if I'm on. No, I'll, I'll sing as long as there's others singing with me. So I sing solo. Solo, you can't hear me. Oh, come on. That's corny, but you still got to chuckle a little bit. Come on. Sheesh. Give me a little bit of love. So this morning as we continue our look at Together, we as a church can do so much more not just by ourselves, but as one body. And that's what we're, our focus will be this morning, but it will also be on the fact that together we can be stronger. I think that uh, to properly do that, we need to go all the way back to the beginning of everything. Not the beginning of everything as in like the book of Genesis, beginning of everything, but the beginning of everything as far as your life. Okay? So, when you were a baby, how many of you have been a baby? I'm really kind of concerned because this is supposed to be unanimous. <laughs> if you have not been a baby, talk with me after church. We'll, we'll, we'll clear a few things up. <laughs> but, but when you were born, what could you do? I mean, seriously, not much, right? And if we were completely 1,000% honest with each other, and give me just a moment of liberty, the only things you could really successfully do were pee, poop, throw up, and cry, Okay. Yes, I just said poop on a Sunday morning in the Church of Nazarene on a platform. It's okay. But tell me I'm wrong, right? I mean, that's, that's pretty much all you had mastered at that point in your life, okay? And if you're lucky, if you're lucky, parents, they slept, right? <laughs> right? We were, we were blessed and not so blessed in the sleeping department with our kiddos. But anyways... But as you got a little bit older, you, you learned a little bit more, and, 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 you, and you could become a little bit more independent. But how did you do that? You had to learn. Someone had to teach you, right? So you had to kind of do it together for a little bit. Together, your, your, folks help, your folks help you learn how to walk. Together, your folks helped you learn how to eat, not throw food across the room. Although some of you still do that. Together, your, your parents helped you learn how to do a whole lot of stuff. But it, as you got older, you figured some of this stuff out for yourself, and you grew stronger, right? You grew stronger physically, you grew stronger emotionally, and, and hopefully along the way, you even grew stronger spiritually. And that is such an important thing for us to understand as, as we look at this idea of being together and the fact that we can grow stronger together. Now, I'm not saying that you can't grow strong by yourself. Of course you can. I mean, those of you who go to the gym, obviously not me, but those of you who go to the gym and work out, you can go do that by yourself, right? That's, that's you time, okay? But there are some of you that go to the gym and do your workout stuff with a group together, and, and, and why do you do that? So that group can help spur you along and get you to your goal and, 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 and keep you accountable and keep you going, right? Same with the church and the, and the church body. We can study and, and read God's word on our own and we can grow and we grow stronger by ourselves. But if we have someone there or a group of people along there with us to encourage each other and to rally us and to keep us going, then together we build that relationship with him. And that's, and that's what Paul has been overemphasizing over and over again as this importance of being together and understanding that, that together we can hear about the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ and that we can grow stronger as one body. That, that story of God's redemptive work in our lives that, that we, we figure out and we learn individually, but together we can grow and grow and, and do much more than we can by ourselves. Amen? So today we continue to look in the book of Ephesians at how God and his good news, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, can help shape us in the way that we live and how we treat each other. How living lives that are worthy of the calling that we have received from him is what we are supposed to do, and that we are to do this and to come together to become stronger. So turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. We'll be looking at verses 15 and 16 this morning. So as you turn, swipe, or whatever your, your pleasure, I'd ask that you would join me together in standing. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15 and 16 say this. 
speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself in love as each part does its work. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for allowing us to have the capability to, to have this word and to study and to learn it individually and as a group together. Help us as we hear from you this morning to understand this idea of growing stronger in you and growing stronger together. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So, got, got a couple dumb questions for you. If you didn't have any muscles in your neck, what would your head do? That. That's exactly what it would do right there, okay? And you wouldn't be able to do anything with it, all right? Stupid question number two. If you didn't have any elbows, what would your arms be able to do? Not a whole lot, right? <laughs> so, I mean, without neck muscles, you wouldn't be able to hold your head up. You wouldn't be able to look around. You wouldn't be able to do a lot of things. Without elbows, you wouldn't be able to bend your arm, scratch your head, rub your tummy, or pull up your britches, all right? You, there's nothing you can't, you can't do anything with it, right? We need our muscles in our neck, and we need our elbows in our arms, right? And, and that's what Paul is trying to get through to us. Not so much about the neck and the elbow thing, but he's trying to get into our minds the importance of the, of the body of Christ and that we need every part to help accomplish the goal that he has set out there for us. We, we're better together, and we indeed can be stronger when we come together as one. But let's break this down just a little bit this morning. So in verse 15, when we speak in truth and in love, that is the result of us being believers, being Christ followers. That is the evidence of Christ living in our lives because it's the outflowing, the, the result of what he's done of the change in our hearts, right? And it's through our speech and our conduct that he has seen in us. One commentator put it this way, he says, This fundamental concern for the truth is the secret of maturity in the church. Maturity in the church. Hence why Paul even says, right there in, in verse 15, We will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him. Again, becoming a mature body. Because as Christ followers, and as the church body, the body of Christ coming together, we should be stressing both truth and love in our lives. And that is a result of being a spiritually mature Christ follower. Help, and that all works together in ourselves to grow us stronger and grows the body of Christ stronger together. Amen? Try that again. Amen? Amen. I just want to make sure you're awake because I can start over. <laughs> But that's not always so easy to do by ourselves, is it? Sometimes we need some help. We need somebody help kind of prodding us along, don't we? And if we, we, we have two sources of that help, first is this, this body of Christ. The other is Jesus himself. That's why he, as the head of the church, or as Paul is putting it, the head of the body, is in charge. Because he's calling the shots. He's directing our paths. He's, he's helping guide us and, and, and move us through life. He's not just part of the body. He is, he is in charge of the whole body. And from there, every joint and ligament is held together by the support of God and his love for us. That love that guides us and directs us and is through that guiding and directing us as individuals and as a church body that we can see in, together that we can grow and build ourselves. We build ourselves up in love and every part does its work. Do you hear it? That's how we grow stronger with the help of Jesus Christ as the head of the body. But truth be told, there is strength in numbers. Think just for a moment, and this is where my mind sometimes goes. Think, some, think about the animals that are out in the wild. 
Uh, if you ever watch any of those nature videos, I think of the ones with like the cheetahs and the lions chasing down their prey as they're running through some valley or, or, or plateau or whatever it is. How do they catch their prey? They catch the one that's, that's cut off from the group or the, the straggler, the one who's falling behind, the one who's alone. Being alone makes the animal vulnerable to attack. And so naturally, they come together as a pack. Why? Because they're strength in numbers. Because together they can provide protection for, for everyone there. They can help provide basic needs, but they're better together. And the early church found that, that there can be strength in numbers because they all came together and shared everything. We even see this made reference to in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2 verse 44 says, All the believers were together and had everything in common. Now, we don't have everything in common, but we have one thing in common. The love of Jesus Christ in our lives. Amen? But for the early church, as well as for us today, there's even a bigger concept working together here. It's more basic than finding food or shelter or anything else. That together, as believers, is more about building up strength and moving forward, not just staying safe. It's about growing stronger together to do the work that God has called the church to do. Amen? Earlier I talked about the beginning of everything, and I didn't mean the book of Genesis. Well, now I do mean the beginning of everything in the book of Genesis. To, 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 to go back to that moment from the beginning of time, the beginning of humanity... See, see, human beings were created to live in relationship and in community. In Genesis 1, we're told that Adam was alone in the garden, and that wasn't good. He didn't need to be alone, so God created Eve, a, a companion for him. Don't believe me? Check out Genesis 1.18, by the way. But we're not supposed to do life by ourselves. We're not supposed to be alone. We need each other. We need to be together. It's literally in our DNA. So as we build a community together and, and fellowship with each other, we can and will become stronger. Now, it's, it's not just about gathering people. It's not just about putting you know, people in seats and, and, and putting dollar bills in the plates. That's, that's not what we're talking about here. It's about strength that comes in numbers because in more numbers means more people. People means more influence, more creativity, more, uh, more ability, more skill, more compassion, more relationships, more love, more support, and more impact to the world out there around us. So that's why we invite people to church. <laughs> that's why we, we have things that, that bring the community in so we can love on these folks so that they can be exposed to the good news of Jesus Christ that we all know because we've come together and experienced it. Now it's our turn to bring them into the fold, to bring them into the body of Christ so they can see this love that he has for us as well, so that we can do more and so that we can grow the kingdom of God. Amen? And this idea is not just exclusive to the writings of Paul in Ephesians. Grab your, grab your Bibles and jump back, back in the Old Testament, back to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. And, 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 and this is this helping support what Paul is telling us. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12 say this. Two are better than one. <laughs> Love it when Scripture does that. Because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity on anyone who falls and has no one to help them. Also, if you lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can you keep warm alone? Though you may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. This is not a new revelation that Paul is introducing to the world. But the fact is that there is strength in numbers. Amen? Back over to Ephesians. 
and a few verses ahead of, of where we are this morning, Paul is explaining to the church there in Ephesus that, that the process of finding strength together started with Jesus Christ himself. Look up at verse uh, 11 through 13. So Christ himself gave the apostles, prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up, verse 13, until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Good stuff, right? <laughs> when, when Kristen and I were in junior high, and it was junior high back then, none of this middle school stuff is junior high, we sat down and we did what was then called a four-year plan. I don't know if they still do this stuff or not. But anyways, the idea of this four-year plan is to, to lay out, set a course, put together a roadmap of what we wanted our high school career to, to end up looking like. So we would sit down and, and look at the required classes that we had to take. We'd look at the, uh, the uh, electives that were being offered for, for that time period, and we'd get things all figured out and, and lay things out the way we wanted to. That was our long-term plan. Of course, we did the thing, and I don't know that we ever actually looked at it after that, but whatever. <laughs> Gotta love it. Anyways, but that was our, our, our long-term plan to, to get us through high school. Well, that's what God is wanting us to do as well. He's, he's, God's long-term plan for us is to understand that it's a transformative, transformative plan and that he is leading us to be together to become stronger. We are to equip our, our, ourselves, his people, for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. That's the plan. And along the way, we learn from those uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, maybe even a pastor or two, and teachers. But here's the thing. Just because those are who Paul is telling us to, that we're to learn from and to, to grow stronger from, it doesn't mean that th those people have to be on a full-time staff at a church. This is, is all of us coming together using our various gifts and talents that God has given us. This is a theory called uh, the... the, the well, the, the brotherhood or the, uh, oh, man, I just went blank. That doesn't happen very often. The priesthood of all believers. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Where it's not just me sharing what Christ has for people. It's you guys. You guys are deputized, if you will. You have the ability to share Christ. It doesn't have to just be a, a pastor, a prophet, or evangelist. You guys can speak Jesus into the lives of people. So this idea that, that all of God's believers are working together to build up the body of Christ, to accomplish what, what God has set forth for us in his word to do. And, and I, I don't see him here this morning. I'm guessing they're, they're probably still working. But we've seen this evident in the life of this church this week. And, and hear me, I'm not bragging at all. So please do not hear me bragging. But those of you who know Justin and Kayla Ebock, they uh, just moved to town. They bought uh, the meat processing plant here in town. And they're working to get things up and running. And to be quite honest, they, they kept having struggle after struggle, and they were having a rough time. And they're not the type to ask for help, trust me. Somebody had to force it out of them. But anyways, they needed help. So, so many of you got text messages or emails from me asking, saying, hey, if you're, if you're able, if you have time, can you go down and help them? And again, not bragging, bragging at all, but it was just a wonderful example of the body of Christ coming together to do what, what God has asked us to do, to speak Christ into their lives by flinging a hammer or running a screwdriver or a really, really bad paint job that I may not may lay claim to later in life. But anyways, I can't paint. But anyways, it got the job done. But we were able to be Christ to them. We were able to come together, and through that, we grew stronger. And it wasn't us doing the work. It was God doing the work through us, pouring out the love that he's already poured out on us, pouring it out on them. Amen? And so why is that important? Because working together as one body, that is the call of Christ. And we see Paul point this out in, in, in another part of, of Ephesians 
back up there in chapter 4, look at verses 4 through 6. It says, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We aren't just to be two or just a few. We aren't instructed to, to, to act as one or kind of sort of be in unity, but we're to be one. One body brought together by Jesus Christ himself. That is the call of Christ. And I think it's perfect imagery that, that, that Paul uses when he talks about and uses the body as an example of, of how we are to be. If you really stop and think about it, our human bodies are absolutely incredible. I mean, just everything that, 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 that are put together to do what, what God has created. But even though our bodies are made up of many parts with individual purposes, they all function as one. And, and as I mentioned earlier, each part needs the support and, and, and of the other so it can function as a unit. You don't have an arm, then you don't, can't use your hand. Don't have a head, you can't use your ear. Things like that. I know it's a little much, but you get the idea. And if you've, and if you've spent any time in church, this idea of the body of Christ is, is nothing new. It probably sounds pretty familiar. But think about those Ephesians. Think about who Paul is writing to here. This was a revolutionary concept to them as the early church. And it's one that Paul so often had to explain to them this importance of coming together as one. In Romans 12.5, he says this, So in Christ, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. But when all the parts are, are working together as one, the body functions smoothly and correctly. The body becomes stronger, it matures, and is able to live out the things that it was made to do. Paul understood that. And that's what he was trying to get through to the church in Ephesus. And that's what he's trying to get through to the church of today. Which brings us back to our main passage from this morning. And I'm going to read it again. Verse 15. Speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. I know there's a lot of body talk, but and it's good imagery, but there, this, this idea of, of, of coming together is, is throughout Scripture. Jesus taught in John 15 about the vine and the branches. Later in Ephesians and in 2 Corinthians verse 11, both of those refer to the church as the bride of Christ, which is the coming together of, of a man and a woman, strengthening in a union. And there's no, numerous references to how believers are to be one in the household and the family of God. Most notably, Galatians chapter 6 and 1 Peter chapter 2. You can read those later. But in all of those descriptions and all of those passages that we have in Scripture, we, the church, are told to be one. And together we become a place of refuge, not of judgment where we can come together and be honest in, in our weaknesses, where we can come together in service and work, where we can come together and rest and, and worship and heal, a place where we can come together and find strength in numbers. One final thought as we wrap up this morning. With every element of growth in our lives, it requires change. Because growing to stronger together, by def definition, means change, right? 
And, and even though that dreaded word change, the capital C change word that everybody gets scared of, that's hard at times, it is good. And it goes hand in hand with growth. Early 21st, 20th century uh, evangelist, teacher, and author Oswald Chambers wrote in his famous devotion book, My Utmost for His Highest, he says this, As soon as we abandon ourselves to God and do the task He has placed closest to us, He begins to fill our lives with surprises. And it's in those surprises that God works and brings change to us. He changes us individually and as a body of Christ. And as we continue this process together, we become sharpened. We become more, more mindful of each other, more loving of each other, and we complement each other. We grow and experience transformation. And Paul spends the rest of Ephesians instructing and reminding that early church of, of how their behaviors their, their, should be driven by their belief system how they act, how they should look different from the world around them. In moving ahead over in verses 22 and 24, he says, You were taught with regard of your, to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. Verse 24, here's the change. And to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. By, by putting on the new self, that's change. And he even goes on to talk about specific behaviors that, that should change when that new self becomes a part of us, when we change in Christ. Anger, stealing, unwholesome talk from our mouths, bitterness and rage are a thing of the past. I knew I was going to do that one of these days. Those things are, are, are not a part of the new self. That's where the change comes in. Instead, he encourages us to be kind and compassionate, loving, forgiving, and thankful. And, and the thing about growth is it's usually a slow process. It can be hard for us to see change when we're right in the middle of absolutely everything. But it's true that as individuals and as a church, as we grow, as we strengthen, that process that we go through, it's slow. That old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? <laughs> but I pray that as a church and as you as an individual, we can commit to the habits that bring change. I also pray that at the same time we can trust the Holy Spirit that is in us, if we have invited him to be in us, that can give us the courage and the power to change and to do what he is want, wanting us to do. We can't just muster up this ability to grow and strengthen and change by ourselves. We must rely on the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit at work in our lives to do those things. But we can be confident that God is going to do this kind of work within us. Amen? And here's the thing about the church. Church here, church universal. It will never be a perfect place. <laughs> Sorry to burst your bubble. Because it'll never be a perfect place because it's brought, brought together by an imperfect group made of imperfect people. And once we come to the point where we can acknowledge that and accept that, and we don't use that as an excuse or cause for us to settle for, for bad habits or practices or, or things that can help us fall short of what God wants us to be, we can do so much more. We can be who God calls us to be and much more. He wants to carry us to the fullness of Christ. He wants to strengthen us and use us to be his body here on earth. He wants us to experience the joy of being one body together, which is healthy, which is being strengthened by the work of Jesus Christ in our lives, and experience and grow to the fullness of the love that he has for all of us. He wants us to help us find the fact that there are strength in numbers and that we can come together 
and that we can do the work of the church as one body. Loving God and loving people. And doing everything that he has asked us to do together. Let's pray. Father, thank you for strengthening us. Thank you for coming into this place and and reminding us that together we truly can do some amazing things. Whether it's coming together and, and helping people in our community, whether it's helping a, a, a loved one or a brother or sister in, in our church go through a tough time. Whatever it might be, Father, help us to realize that it's you at, at work in our lives and it's also at you, you at work in the church, in the body of Christ bringing us together as one body with Christ as the head directing us and and giving us the, the wisdom to know what to do and calling the shots. So Father, help us not to to neglect coming together. Help us, Father, not to neglect the opportunity that that we have as a body of Christ to come together and to grow and to strengthen each other, to support one another, to lift one another up in times of, of, of hurt or strife. Help us to realize, Father, we're not supposed to be alone. We're not supposed to do this thing called life by ourselves that there are others who care about us, that there are others who love us, that there are others who are willing to sacrifice for us to help us grow in our relationship with you. Thank you for loving us in such a way that that through unity in the church, we can, we can even understand that love even more. Thank you for loving us that we can come together as a church and to love on others. There's so many, even here in Kinmare, Lord, who need to see this type of love modeled in their lives. So many that don't know what it means to truly be loved. So many that don't know what it's like to be in in and amongst a group of people who love them regardless. Who are willing to help regardless. Who are willing to, to, to come alongside them and help them and support them. Help us to come together as a body of Christ to love on our community. So Father, right now I, I pray for the people in Kenmare. I pray for the people in Bowbells and all the surrounding areas, Lord. You know their hurts. You know their, their, the things that they go through. Father, there, there are people that are dying and going to hell within the, the realm of this city and this area who don't know you, who don't know this love. Help us before it's not too late to show them what it means to be the body of Christ. Father, give us opportunities. Open up doors, kick down doors, to, to, to give us the chance to speak your love into their lives. Thank you for speaking to our lives that way. Thank you for loving us when others may not. And help us to know that you are with us every single moment of the day. Providing us the strength that we need. We love you, Lord. We worship and we praise you. 
thank you for everything that you're doing. Of course, in your wonderful, beautiful, matchless, glorious name that we pray. Everyone said, amen. So let us continue on this journey together. Let us also be committed to to the work and the change that sometimes has to grow as we strengthen. And, And let us work together and to be reminded that we can grow stronger together, that we're better together, and that there is indeed strength in numbers. Amen? Amen. Love you guys. Have an amazing, fantabulous week. And we'll see you next time. God bless.